Welcome to SWW News. I'm Aaron Ree. And I'm writer Greg. How are things going for you tonight, Aaron? I'm, as usual, gooder. <laughs> uh, how about yourself, Greg? Hey, did you see the invoices for Boxes Melody sent? Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I don't know what to say by then. Well, I'll dig through the school cafeteria to see if we have any empty food containers. Yeah, I can always go to, like, U-Haul or something and see if we can get her some boxes. So you ready to do the news? You bet, Aaron. Time for the news. The company is under intense international scrutiny following an investigation by the United Nations for crimes against humanity. We received this statement from the International Criminal Court. We have received reports of the company acting in violation of international criminal law, particularly in the arena of imprisonment and unwilling human experimentation. An investigation is underway and a number of the company's employees and directors await trial at The Hague. Torture and genocide are among the charges being considered. Details of the charges remain sketchy as much of this information has been declared material to state security in the Lappin and Mellis protectorates. This is the first time in history that such charges have been laid against a corporation registered in North America, and the first time that a corporation has been recognized as a political organization under international law. We will definitely be watching this story closely. The company's legal struggles continue in other arenas as well. Lappin, Eds, and Coroptera versus GOT News and the company settled out of court this week for an undisclosed sum. Today, the Lappin Protectorate announced that the company was also under investigation for numerous health and environmental violations, as well as a conflict of interest violation for beginning their own media company. The company could not be reached for comment. And now for SWW News Editorials. What are your thoughts on this, Aaron? Do you think it's appropriate for a corporation to be considered a political organization under international law? Absolutely, I do, Greg. I think that that's the problem with global corporations and multinational corporations in general, is that they often fly under the radar of existing national or international law. But when corporations have more resources at their disposal than some small countries, some medium countries, they begin to manipulate the national and international political structure. I think that holding them accountable for those actions will resist a lot of abuses, not just in the case of extreme changes leveled at the company, but also in regards to things like enslavement of migrant workers, human trafficking for the purposes of labor, and safe and humane working conditions, or the ability of workers to organize. I think that this is a step in the right direction. I hope to see more of it. Back to you, Greg. Thanks, Aaron. And for my editorial. This is a sticky situation that drafters of many constitutions may not have accounted for. In situations like this, dealing with multinational organizations like the company, it is important to return to first principles. Professional accountability in civil cases and personal responsibility in criminal cases. Financial punishments for the companies? jail time, or similar for individuals. The company should be held civilly liable for any damages caused by the corporation's actions. But this does not address the criminal laws that were also broken. The individuals who committed crime should be held criminally responsible as determined by a jury of their peers. Corporations like the company are their own legal entity, separate from the people within it. However, the company must be held responsible and, if required, dissolve to compensate those individuals harmed. However, it is the people who lead corporations, like the company, where people should be held personally accountable for the crimes they personally committed. Appropriate punishments, according to the law, should be delivered to prevent individuals from hiding behind another corporate veil. 
Thank you for listening to SWW News Editorials. Now, let's get back to the news. With the Tourney of Tales wrapping up, the purpose of the mysterious Power Riders 50K Challenge has now been revealed. Let's go to Tal Element Eds for more. Tal, what's happening? Greg, it turns out that the Power Riders Challenge was not simply a personal test to determine which one of them had the biggest word count. Apparently, the effort was required to protect the realm from the looming threat of a potential early word war. Twelve Tome Knights, who are known to consistently churn out impressive word counts, were bound to the ritual. And yes, this was related to why Sable Bright Eyes was seen running across the tourney field in half-rabbit form the other day. In addition to the work of the Power Riders, a number of Tome Knights decided to write in support of their effort. House Apis even organised a cheer-along event for the occasion. Apparently, part of the reason for Sable's pink glow was to tie in what they were doing with the ongoing ritual. Many of the Tome Knights who were involved remain casualties of the effort. We have this clip from a press conference given by the Mother of Bunnies this morning. Tech Room, could you run clip five, please? To the Mad Batter, Tim Anderson, Egriff, Queen Siobhan, Prince Jean, Prince Eli, Fantasine, Crazy Spark Athena, Duo Chan Fan, Leisha MB, Atoru, Safa, and also to Queen Masadis, Queen Danny, Princess Melody, Princess Sunny, Captain Shy Red Fox, Captain Dan Linnea, um, Master Dragoness Nia, Author Goddess, Nicola Void, Wolfkeeper, and Flub. I cannot thank you enough for your courage, your inspirational strength, and your sacrifice. On behalf of all the great houses, it is my honor and privilege to bestow upon all of the Tome Knights who put their literomancy to the test in this effort the title of Defender of the Realm. This is the equivalent of a knighthood carrying all the rights and responsibilities inherent to this rank. You may wear this medal at any state occasion among the Literomantic Houses to represent your new title and your epic accomplishment. The realm is in your debt. Congratulations to the Defenders of the Realm and thank you for your service. That's what's happening. Back to you, Greg. Thanks, Tal. And thank you again, the new Defenders of the Realm, and thank you for bringing honor to the name of Literomancers. In other news, strange creatures have been sighted in the New York Sound and in the vicinity of Hope Reef. These creatures are said to have an unworldly appearance. None of these creatures have been caught on video. Aaron, what are your thoughts? I've read the descriptions. Apparently, there's teeth and tentacles involved. I personally think that it's void hysteria because the void has been in the news so frequently of late. What about you, Greg? It's hard to say. There are clearly many things in this new age that are unfamiliar to any of us. I'd say that anything is possible. When we come back from the break, we'll have some of the final tourney stats for you and the current standings. And just a reminder, if you want to support us, every subscription and YouTube membership helps keep us on the air. We've also started a membership program through our website at www.sww.com forward slash join. We'll be back after this. Thank you so much for watching SWW News. <laughs>